So my PhD is focused on studying the biology behind herpes simplex virus infection, which is a medically relevant virus because it causes pathology in a certain number of individuals that are infected. And by understanding the replication cycle of the virus better, that will help us inform the design of potential therapeutics or vaccines to help target the infection in affected individuals. So the process of producing an image like this is actually quite highly involved. There's quite an extensive workflow. So to start off, I've spent the first part of my PhD at Cambridge generating the fluorescent viruses that allow us to distinguish these different components. And then here, the process of actually preparing the sample is quite highly involved in that you have to seed them on very small EM grids infect the cells at the right density, and then we subject them to a process called plunge freezing, wherein we freeze the samples instantaneously so that no ice forms, everything just freezes physically in space. And in doing so, we preserve the native structure of the cell. The next thing we do is image them on two different microscopes. The first thing we do is image them on the cryosim, which produces this image. And then secondly, we image them on the X-ray microscope, which allows us to view a general structure, which gives us, which allows us to view the general landscape of the cell. So this is an X-ray tomogram that we produce on the X-ray microscope. And so the way it works is X-rays cause different components of the cell to contrast nicely compared to the liquid cytoplasm. And that produces a natural contrast that allows us to study the structure of many different components in the cell. So for instance, here we can see the nucleus in the left, and this is the nuclear membrane here. And all of these black dots in here are the viral capsids. And then on the other side, we have the cytoplasm, where you can see components such as the mitochondria, which are quite dark. And these really dark spots are lipid droplets. But What's really great about this technique is you can image the entire depth of the cell. So we can actually produce a three-dimensional image that we can scroll through. So by merging the X-ray tomogram and the SIM of the same cell, we can study the distribution of specific viral components that we're interested in, in the wider context of the cellular environment. So for instance, here we can see viral components in the nucleus appearing in green associating with these black puncta and in the cytoplasm we can see mitochondria in blue associating with the dark structures we see in the tomogram this combined microscopy imaging tool that we use gives us a new method to understand how herpes viruses infect cells. This is an infected cell, and you can see several components of infection here. So in the nucleus, we can see immature viral particles in cyan. And then next to the nucleus, we can see these merging with a different viral component in magenta. And this is where we believe mature viral particles are developing. We can also see components of the cell, such as mitochondria in yellow. That's what these long structures are. So this is an X-ray tomogram. X-ray tomograms are produced by harnessing the power of X-rays which naturally cause components of the cell to contrast quite well. So for instance, we can see here in the bottom left, this is the cell nucleus. Each of these small dots are immature viral particles. And then on the right, we can see the cytoplasm outside. These dark objects here are mitochondria, and these black spots are lipid droplets. These store lipids for the cell to use. And the great thing about X-ray tomography is that we can image the entire depth of the cell. 
So this image, so this is a three-dimensional image of the depth of the cell. So by merging X-ray tomography and SIM together, we can study specific components of viral infection that we're interested in within the context of the cellular environment. So for instance, here we can see immature viral particles in green in the nucleus. And we can also see mitochondria just outside the nucleus extending all the way around.